Now I'm going to show you what our brother Brian um, has brought forth and, and, and shown us. And um, it's really, really interesting. This is a very interesting find. Um, and in combination of what Jared just uh, gave us, we're going to combine what Jared gave us and we're going to combine what I'm going to show you that our brother um, uh, Brian gave us. We're going to combine that together. And that's going to be our second half of the video where brother Wu is going to take over the teaching. And he's going to show you some amazing and outstanding, unbelievable revelations <clears throat> that we were able to get uh, from our further studies of what our brother Jared and brother Brian gave us. It's just going to be tremendous. So stay tuned for the second part of this video. Um, but what I want to show you <clears throat> is, is I'm going to build on this. And what you're about to see is something you've never seen before. You thought you've seen something in the scriptures, but we're, we're going to take it one step further and show you something that's just going to be amazing. So watch this. When we get into Daniel 7, okay, <clears throat> what does he tell us? He says, and I heard the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the rivers, when he held up his right hand and his left hand unto heaven and swear by him that liveth forever that it shall be for a time, times, and half. And when, he, and when he shall have accomplished to scatter the power of the holy people, all these things shall be finished. Let's go back to this. It shall be for a time, times, and a half. How many times have we read that in the past? <clears throat> and haven't we all thought this to be Two and a half years, time, times, and half, two and a half years. Well, let me start off by saying this. <clears throat> I believe from everything that we studied that it very well could have a dual meaning. As all scripture does, you know, scripture applies to the past, scripture applies to the present, and scripture applies to the future. I So I do believe that this could still be saying two and a half years, but could it also be meaning something else? Could this time, times, and half mean something else? Yes, it very well could. And that's what our brother Brian brought out. And that's what I wanna to present to you today. So what else could it mean? Well, let's kind of get into that. What, what is this time and times? When you look at time and times, it's both the 4150 in Strong's. And so what does that mean? It says an appointed due season, a set time appointed. Appointed due season, a set time that's been appointed. So it shall be for a due season, a set time appointed. And what else could it mean? Watch this. You're going to love this one, brothers and sisters. It means to summon for a marriage, to make an appointment, to assemble yourselves, to betroth, marriage, to set a time. Wait a minute. Let's take a closer look at that. It shall be for a season to summon for a marriage and to make an appointment, to betroth, to set a time. To summon for a marriage to make an appointment? He's talking about the end comes to summon for a marriage to make an appointment? Oh, we're going to build on this. This is going to get better. Watch this. Let's go down to um, <clears throat> Second Peter. What does Second Peter say? Second Peter uh, chapter 3. <clears throat> okay. What does he say? Let's go to 3.8. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. One day with the Lord is as a thousand years. 
And why is he saying, be not ignorant of this one thing? This one thing of all the things that he's teaching, he's telling us not to be ignorant of this one fact, this one thing, that one day with the Lord is a thousand years. Why is he saying that? What's the importance of this? Could it be that this is the secret that unlocks the seasons of the time mentioned that we just showed you in Daniel 12? Could it be that the one day is actually a thousand years for a time appointed to summons the marriage to betroth? Think about that. We're going to build on this. I want to show you something that was really, really interesting. Let's go into second Esdras. And it's second Esdras 728, I believe. This is the Lord speaking. This is the Lord God speaking to Ezra. Listen to what he says. For my son Jesus shall be revealed with those that be with him. And they that remain shall rejoice within 400 years. The Lord God is telling Ezra that his son Jesus will be revealed within 400 years. I want everyone to think about that for a second. This is the Lord God telling Ezra that his son Jesus will be coming within 400 years. Why is this so important? Why is that important? What did we show in, in some of our other prior teachings? Let's go to Daniel 10. We're building on this. I'm going to just bring it all together in just a minute. What happens in Daniel 10? It says, in the third year of Cyrus, the king of Persia, a thing was revealed unto Daniel. The thing was a true, but the time was appointed. What did we just read about the bride, the marriage? The word time, times, and a half meant what? An appointed time to summon for marriage, the bride. The thing was true, but the time was appointed was long. And Daniel was mourning for, for three full weeks. And after he's mourning and fasting, what happens? The Lord Jesus Christ appears before him. And we've taught this before. When you read these verses here, the Lord Jesus Christ appeared before Daniel. When you get to Daniel 10, 5 and read on down, the Lord Jesus Christ appears to Daniel. Why is this so important? What did we teach in some of our prior videos? What was going on? Um, let me see here. Hidden fast. Okay, so what happened was this: when we when we did some of our prior teaching, we have a, we have a short video on this. So if you want to see one of our short videos, it goes into great detail about this teaching. Ezra and Nehemiah and Zechariah and Daniel and Jeremiah and all these other major and minor prophets, they came out of captivity together. You know, in the churches, they, they, they lead us to believe that all of these prophets were alive at different times and different places in history, but they came out of captivity from Babylon together. They were all together. So when God spoke to Ezra, as I just showed you, that his son, Jesus Christ, is coming in 400 years, Daniel was there. They were all there, and they made a pact. They made a covenant to the Lord. And when you go into our prior teaching, you'll see what that pact was. They, they made a pact to the Lord that they're going to remove the strangers from their land. They're going to restore and rebuild the temple. They're going to keep the Lord's covenant that he made with them and that they're going to reinstate the Enoch calendar. They made this pact with God. And God told Ezra, I just showed it to you. God told Ezra, his son, Jesus Christ, will come in 400 years. But then a couple days later, the Lord Jesus Christ appears to Daniel and Daniel was frightened because Ezra already told him, you know, the Lord told me Jesus Christ is coming in 400 years. But now all of a sudden, a few days later, Jesus Christ appears to Daniel. They were all there at the same time. All of these prophets were there at the exact same time. 
And this is very, very important to understand all of this. Because the Lord Jesus Christ, when he appeared to Daniel, <clears throat> he let Daniel understand that the appointed time was for a time in the future. It's for a time that's coming later in the future. It's not a time for now. And that's really critical to understand this. So if Ezra and Daniel were together and the Lord told Ezra that the time his son Jesus was coming is about 400 years. And then a few days later, Jesus appears to Daniel. That's what that's why Daniel, when you read the Daniel uh, 10 prophecy, that's why Daniel fell to his knees because he was frightened. He thought Jesus wasn't coming for another few hundred years like like Ezra told him, like God told Ezra. But now Jesus is appearing to Daniel. But Jesus let Daniel know that it was for, it was an appointed time. The prophecy was for an appointed time that was coming later in the future. And that the time appointed was long. The time appointed was long and that Daniel understood that. And the Lord let him understand that the time that of this prophecy that he was seeing was for a long time away. So how do we put all this together? Well, let's think. If Daniel and Ezra, <clears throat> we know that the time frame, I'm just giving you a roundabout time frame. The roundabout time frame that Daniel and Ezra were alive were somewhere in the area of <clears throat> right around 480 BC. Right around 480 BC, give or take a few years here or there. But that was the time frame of when they were all alive and they came out of captivity. And what does it say back in <clears throat> Daniel 12? Let's kind of go look at that. A time, times, and a half. And the word time means, again, to make an appointment, to assemble, to summon for marriage. This is starting to sound more and more like the escape of the bride, the time of the escape of the bride. So what does this time and times and a half really represent? What could it really possibly be representing? Jesus must have told Daniel <clears throat> that he's coming for the engagement, for the marriage, to make an appointment, to be summoning the bride. This must have been the com conversation that, that the Lord had with Daniel, because that's what it means. This time that's been appointed, this long time, that's for the latter days, is for the marriage, to summon for a marriage. So the Lord Jesus Christ must have been saying this to, to Daniel. Therefore, not only did Daniel, <clears throat> not only did Jesus Christ tell Daniel that he's coming, but he must have told Daniel that he's coming for an appointed time for the marriage. And we're going to build on this and show this. Now let's calculate it. What did we say? That the time frame was, was probably around 480 BC when Daniel and Ezra and all the other prophets came out of captivity of Babylon. Let's see how all this fits together now. We're going to calculate this for everybody. When we have the Daniel 12, 7 telling us it was 2.5. And this is this. What we're saying is an appointed time, a season, not meaning 2.5 years, but as 2.5 seasons. And what does 2 Peter say? That a day unto the Lord is a thousand years. When you multiply the 2.5 times a thousand years, could he, could he have been referring to the season of 2,500 years? Could this be? And what do we know about Daniel and his 69 weeks? When you multiply 69 times seven, it's 483. This is about the approximate time. In 480, approximately around 480 BC is when Daniel, Ezra, Nehemiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Zechariah, all of them came out of captivity. What if, brothers and sisters, this is what's going on? That this 2.5 really represents a season or seasons 
of a thousand years, each season being a thousand years. And when you multiply the 2.5 seasons, it gives you 2,500 years. And when you subtract out the 483 years, when Daniel was receiving this prophecy, the first 69 weeks, what do you get? The year 2017. This is absolutely mind blowing. Could it be brothers and sisters? Could it be that this really truly is what we should be looking at in the scriptures as far as this prophecy goes, that he's talking about 2.5 seasons and each season is a thousand years to the Lord, a total of 2,500 years. And when they received this prophecy, it was about 480 BC. And when you subtract those 483 years, the, the 69 weeks of Daniel, it brings you to the year 2017. There's no coincidences with God. What happened in 2017? We had the great American eclipse on August 21st. We had the Revelation 12 sign on September 23rd. And Trump declared Jerusalem the eternal capital of Israel on December the 6th, all happening in 2017. All of this happened in 2017. And why else is this important? Let's go take a look at Luke. Let's go to Luke 13. And I believe it's in Luke 13, 6, 9. So we'll go there, 6, 6 through 9. The parable of the barren fig tree. And he spoke also this parable of a certain man who had a fig tree planted in the vineyard. And he came and sought the fruit therein and found none. And then he said unto the dresser of the vineyards, Behold, these three years, three years, I come seeking fruit on the fig tree and find none. Cut it down. Why cumbereth the ground? In three years, they want the fig tree cut down. And we all know Jerusalem is the example of the fig tree. And he's saying, cut it down after these three years. And he answering said unto him, Lord, let it alone this year also, till I shall dig about it and dung. And if it bears fruit, well, and if not, then after that, thou shalt cut it down. But what's important? I want everyone to understand what I'm about to show you. There's something here that we've kind of all overlooked. He's saying, behold, these three years. And then he says this year, let it alone this year. So this year is just after the three years and before the fourth year. Notice he doesn't say the fourth year. It's after the third year and prior to the fourth year. Why is that important? Let's look at our timeline again. Let's look at this parable of the fig tree. January 23rd, 2017, was started in 2017, and the parable of the fig tree going three years. So from January 23rd, why are we using January 23rd? Because we showed everyone that Jerusalem was declared the eternal capital by Israel in 1950. So in the year in the year 2017, Jerusalem would have been 67. So when you go from 2017 to 2018, that's year one. And 2018 to 2019 is year two. And 2019 to 2020 is three years. This is three years. And when is it? The 70th year of Jerusalem. On January 23rd, 2020, Jerusalem turned 70 years old. Do you see how precise this count is right now? This three years of the parable of the fig tree brings us to January 23rd, 2020, the third year in which Jerusalem did turn 70. But what do we say? They turned 70, but now they have to complete the 70 years. When do they complete their 70th year? On January 23rd, 2021. They turn 71. So between January 23rd, 2020 and January 23rd, 2021, Jerusalem is still in its 70th year. But on January 23rd, 2021, they turn 71. This, brothers and sisters, is the three years of the parable of the fig tree. And Jerusalem did turn 70 on January 23rd, 2020. And now on our timeline, we clearly show 
that Jerusalem does not make it to January 23rd. Sometime between December 25th and just prior to January 23rd, Jerusalem will complete their 70 years and be attacked and destroyed. They will not make it to year 71. And that's what we're showing here in the parable of the fig tree. It's the same. It's the exact same thing. That parable of the fig tree is showing us the same thing. That prior to reaching 71, Jerusalem will be destroyed. This is what's going on. This is what we're looking at. This is the three years of the parable of the fig tree. Now, I want to thank you, Brother Brian, for, um, for bringing all of this to our attention and for sharing this with us and for helping us build on it. We, we thank you so much for all your devotion and everything that you've been doing.